for loops look uh, work a lot like while loops, except they let you do a little bit extra at the top. So I'm going to go and paste in that first for loop there from the book. Control A, Alt Shift F. So let's analyze what this for loop is actually doing here. So this first part right here, this is the first thing that gets executed. It creates a integer called i and sets its value to two. The second thing that gets executed is it checks, hey, is i less than or equal to eight? No, it's two less than or equal to eight, yes. So it's gonna go, now, you might think that's the next statement. That's actually the last statement run. So it's gonna first execute all the statements inside. For our for loop, there's only one statement inside. And then after it runs it, it'll run the i plus equals two line. So it runs at the end. So that's gonna run at the end. We'll go ahead and run it. Um, it should start out with a two. So you have two, four, six, eight. All right. Uh, and of course that print statement happens at the end. Uh, of the entire loop. So if you look at a flowchart, what you do first is you check the Boolean. If it's true, you're gonna run the, in the, our case, there's only one statement inside, uh, but you can certainly have uh, more than one statement. This will just repeat it twice. You could run two statements inside. So it runs all the inner statements, uh, and then it goes to the update, which is right there. So let's go ahead and do another one. Uh, ah, so there is a word of warning here. Uh, you might think that you can print I. Uh, you can't even run the code uh, because it doesn't know what I is. And you should be thinking, well, I is right up there. How could it not know what I is? Come on, show me the error message. There it is, can I find simple i? So when you declare right here this i, you're creating it, and it only exists inside this block right here. So from curly brace to curly brace, i exists. When you leave the curly brace, i no longer exists. So how can we solve this issue? There's a few things we can do. We can take that entire thing and put it up here with a semicolon and run it again. So we just entirely, I don't like this double print. So we just removed uh, that whole declaration out there. So that's one option. Another option is you can declare it outside, assign it the value right there and then you'll get the final uh, value at the end. And look at that. All right, so why does i equal 10? Well, let's think about the order everything happens. So it started at two, so we just saw two, four, six. All right, once it's eight, eight is less than or equal to eight, so it's gonna print this right here. And then it's going to increment by two. However, now i is 10. 10 is no longer less than or equal to eight, so it's false. But remember, i is still 10, so it will finish the for loop and the first line of code that gets executed afterwards is the i equals right there. So that's why you see i is 10, because it failed that test, but i still has that value of 10.